What would you do if every day could be your last? Could humans survive in a world with no safety, no food and constant predators? Millions of years ago, early humans faced exactly these challenges. They faced constant threats from predators, harsh weather and scarce food. Every day was a struggle to survive. We often picture these ancestors as fragile, stumbling beings wandering aimlessly through the wilderness. But the truth, however, is far more remarkable. Early humans were thinkers, innovators and strategists. They were survivors navigating a world that would destroy any creature unprepared. These humans were not helpless. They made tools from stone and bone. They learned to control fire. They hunted and gathered in groups. They shared knowledge and strategies that improved their chances of survival. The world offered no second chances. One wrong step could mean injury, disease or death. Climate shifts and natural disasters struck without warning, yet humans endured. They adapted, moved to new lands and overcame challenges that would have destroyed less resourceful species. How did humans thrive in a world determined to destroy them? This is more than a story of survival, a story about human ingenuity and determination. It is about the courage and persistence that allowed early humans to survive in a world that was unforgiving and dangerous. So millions of years ago, Africa was a dangerous place, a land where survival was never guaranteed. Predators ruled the landscape, and even early human ancestors were not safe. Lions, leopards, saber-toothed cats, hyenas, and the terrifying Dinophilus, a cat specially adapted to hunt humans, roamed the plains and forests. For Australopithecines and early Homo species like Homo habilis, every day was a calculated gamble between life and death. Here, archaeology gives us horrible proof of this deadly reality. Take Swartkrans Cave in South Africa. Fossil evidence from this site reveals that early humans were frequently victims of predation rather than hunters themselves. Many of the bones of Gressel australopithecines found there, often just skulls, show unmistakable signs of leopard attacks. Crania bear puncture marks, chewed fragments and bite patterns that match what modern leopards leave behind. More recently, Fossils of Paranthropus robustus show identical damage, confirming that these ancient humans were living in a world where large predators didn't just threaten them occasionally, they hunted them regularly. And simply the danger was not just on the ground. The Taung Child, a famous fossil of a young Australopithecus africanus, offers a glimpse of aerial threats. Its skull shows punctures and scratches from eagle talons, along with a depressed fracture on the top of its head, evidence that raptors could swoop down and kill even the smallest hominins. In this world, humans were not only avoiding lions and leopards, they also had to worry about predators from the sky. At Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania, the picture of predation becomes even more intense. Fossils of Homo habilis, such as OH8 and OH35, display not only leopard tooth marks, but also crocodile bite damage. This suggests these individuals may have fallen victim to multiple predators, possibly first attacked on land and then dragged into water. The landscape was deadly and death could come from any direction, land, water or air. Early humans were clearly vulnerable. Even though they had weapons, they lacked fire to keep predators away, had no sophisticated weapons, and were not fast runners compared to many of their attackers. Their best chance of survival was often retreating into trees or staying in rough terrain, where predators couldn't easily reach them. For them, every meal was a risk, every movement a calculation. Life was a constant struggle, like a high-stakes game of strategy and awareness against predators who had spent millions of years perfecting their hunting skills. The early Pliocene and Pleistocene epochs were times of dramatic environmental upheaval. Forests slowly receded, giving way to sprawling grasslands and rainfall became unpredictable, sometimes deluging the land, other times leaving it parched. Ice ages advanced and retreated, bringing freezing cold one moment and scorching heat the next. For early humans, these changing conditions were not just inconveniences, they were life or death challenges. Homo erectus, for example, managed to survive in harsh desert-like regions as far back as 1.2 million years ago. Archaeological evidence from Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania reveals that these early humans repeatedly returned to reliable freshwater sources, carefully remembering where rivers and springs flowed even as the climate shifted around them. Tools and simple dwellings were not mere conveniences, they were essential lifelines, critical for hunting, processing food and finding shelter from the elements. 
climatic instability demanded rapid adaptation and relentless perseverance. Early humans could no longer rely solely on the familiar forest. Many had to venture into open savannas where danger lurked at every turn, but they managed to learn to read the land, tracking seasonal growth of edible plants, following herds of animals, and recognizing the signs of approaching floods or droughts. Survival depended not just on strength or speed, but on intelligence, flexibility, and relentless observation. Every decision mattered. The choice of a campsite, the timing of a hunt, the path through unknown terrain. They became keen observers of nature, reading subtle cues in the weather, the behavior of animals and the landscape itself. Their survival was a constant balancing act between opportunity and danger, where insight and foresight often meant the difference between life and death. Early humans had to solve problems constantly, how to access food, defend themselves, and thrive in a landscape teeming with danger. Homo habilis rose to this challenge with the Older One Toolkit. Crude at first glance, but revolutionary in its impact. Simple stone choppers, scrapers and cores allowed hominins to cut through tough plant matter, process meat from scavenged carcasses, and even defend themselves when threatened. These were the first instruments of survival, crafted with purpose and intention. Bone tools dating back 1.5 million years revealed that hominins had begun transferring napping techniques from stone to bone, a leap in cognitive that wouldn't be widely repeated for another million years. These tools were carefully shaped, demonstrating foresight and planning. Each cut and strike was deliberate, designed to solve a specific problem rather than produced randomly. Fire, however, became the defining tool of human survival. At Wanderwerk Cave in South Africa, archaeologists have uncovered burned bones and ashed plant remains dating back one million years, deep inside the cave, proving that early humans had mastered controlled fire. Later, at Kazem Cave in Israel, repeated hearth use 300,000 to 400,000 years ago demonstrates systematic fire management, including the preheating of flint to precise temperatures for more effective tool production. Fire transformed life. It provided warmth against the cold, light in the darkness, and protection from predators. Cooking food made nutrients easier to digest, increasing caloric intake and energy for survival. Beyond practical benefits, fire allowed humans to manipulate their environment in unprecedented ways. They could drive prey toward traps, illuminate hunting grounds, and extend their activities into the night, reshaping the boundaries of daily life. Each innovation reflected planning, creativity, and adaptability, turning early humans from passive survivors into active agents in a perilous world. Innovation was power. And in a landscape ruled by predators and unpredictability, it often meant the difference between life and death. Also, early humans had to be clever, flexible, and opportunistic. Homo habilis, for instance, likely scavenged meat from the kills of smaller predators, arriving at carcasses before the largest cats could reclaim their prize. Using stone tools, they could strip flesh and crack open bones to extract the nutrient-rich marrow inside, a high-calorie resource but meat was never the staple. Plant foods formed roughly 80% of early human diets. Leaves, tubers, berries, nuts, and pulses provided energy and essential nutrients, but they were tough, fibrous, and sometimes difficult to digest. Fossilized teeth from this era show heavy wear, a physical effort required just to eat. Eating was hard work, and the body paid a daily price for the sustenance it gained. When food was scarce, early humans turned to more unusual sources. Insects offered protein, and honey provided sugar and calories. Knowledge of edible plants versus toxic ones became critical. Some tubers or fruits could be deadly if misidentified. Mastering this botanical knowledge allowed early humans to exploit a wide range of environments, from dense forests to open savannas, giving them a vital edge in the constant battle against starvation. Early humans learned to read the seasons, track the availability of plants and prey, and make the most of whatever the environment offered. In a world of constant uncertainty, understanding food was just as crucial as understanding predators, fire, or tools. It was one of the first lessons in turning intelligence into survival. Early humans lived in groups of 20 to 100 individuals, often combining multiple families into larger units. Living together provided protection from predators, facilitated the sharing of knowledge, and made it easier to acquire and defend resources. Alone, an early human had little chance. Together, they could endure, adapt, and even thrive. 
Evidence from Shanidar Cave in Iraq offers powerful insights into the depth of early human cooperation and compassion. Neanderthals buried there cared for severely disabled members of their group. Shanidar I, for example, survived for 10 to 15 years, despite blindness, a withered arm and severe joint disease, a period of survival that would have been impossible without group support. Another individual, Shanidar IV, was discovered with pollen from medicinal plants, suggesting not only ritual burial but also practical knowledge of healing and plant properties. These examples show that early humans were capable of empathy, caregiving and knowledge sharing long before the modern era. Cooperation extended beyond care to daily survival tasks. There was likely a division of labour that maximised efficiency. Women often gathered and prepared food, maintained tools and cared for children, while men focused on hunting, defending the group and trading with other units. These roles were flexible and interdependent, fostering trust, teaching and social learning. Every member of the group had a part to play and every action contributed to the safety and survival of the whole. Life for early humans was physically punishing. Most individuals lived only 25 to 40 years and women faced especially high risks during childbirth. Skeletal remains from this period reveal the harsh realities of survival. Arthritis from repetitive strain, tiny fractures from falls or accidents, infections that could fester, and traumatic injuries inflicted by predators or hunting accidents. Even a seemingly minor wound could turn deadly without knowledge of care or treatment, but archaeological evidence suggests that they practiced forms of primitive medicine. Natural painkillers such as extracts from poplar bark were likely used to reduce suffering. Wounds were cleaned to prevent infection and group members provided care for the injured or disabled, ensuring that even those who could not defend themselves could survive. Also evidence of healed fractures and long-term survival with disabling injuries shows that early humans were not only physically tough but also intelligent and socially connected. They learned to observe symptoms, apply remedies and cooperate in ways that improve their chances of survival. Ice ages were some of the harshest tests early humans ever faced. Freezing temperatures, shifting landscapes and unpredictable weather demanded extreme adaptability. To survive, humans developed strategies that went beyond instinct – clothing to retain warmth, shelters to shield from the cold, and controlled fire to provide heat, light and protection from predators. These innovations allowed them to endure conditions that would have killed less resourceful species. Migration offered another solution, but it was never simple. Early humans attempted new routes into unknown territories only to fail repeatedly in the face of glaciers, deserts and unstable ecosystems. It was the ecological flexibility within Africa, the ability to exploit a range of environments, read seasonal changes and survive with limited resources that eventually enabled successful dispersal out of the continent around 50,000 years ago. Around 930,000 years ago, human ancestors faced a severe population bottleneck, shrinking the species to roughly 1,280 individuals. This near-extinction event was catastrophic, but it also became a crucible for evolution. With so few survivors, natural selection intensified, favoring traits that improved survival under extreme conditions, cooperation, intelligence, adaptability, and social cohesion. Every skill, every strategy, and every innovation mattered even more because the margin for error had never been smaller. In this period, humans were pushed to their limits. By 1.75 million years ago, Homo erectus had begun an extraordinary journey, spreading across vast stretches of Eurasia. Archaeological sites like Dimonesi in modern-day Georgia offer powerful evidence of this global push. Humans repeatedly occupied this site over at least 80,000 years, showing not only the ability to survive far from Africa, but also the capacity to adapt to radically different climates, landscapes and food sources. The iconic Laetoli footprints in Tanzania provide another glimpse of this adaptability. Preserved in volcanic ash, these footprints show clear evidence of bipedal locomotion, highlighting both physical endurance and an upright posture that freed hands for tool use, carrying food, and other survival tasks. Walking on two legs was more than movement. It was an evolutionary advantage, allowing early humans to travel long distances, monitor the landscape for danger, and respond quickly to new challenges. Through ingenuity, flexibility, and shared knowledge, early humans transformed from vulnerable African inhabitants into a globally dispersed species. 
their journey laid the foundation for the human story, a species capable of overcoming extreme environments, mastering new territories and ultimately shaping the world itself. Even the most inventive and adaptable humans had their limits. When resources became scarce and survival hung by a thread, extreme measures were sometimes necessary. Grandolina in Spain provides evidence of this brutal reality. Fossils dating back 850,000 years reveal systematic cannibalism, cut marks on bones, careful defleshing, dismemberment, and the extraction of marrow. These findings remind us that the prehistoric world was unforgiving. Survival was not just about avoiding predators or mastering fire, it was also about making impossible choices when food was scarce humans could exploit every available resource, including the bodies of their own kind, to sustain life. While unsettling, this behavior underscores a fundamental truth. Early humans were driven by the same instinct that governs all life, the imperative to survive, even in the most extreme circumstances. Grandolina is a reminder to the lengths humans would go when pushed to the edge. It was raw, pragmatic, and sometimes horrifying. Survival in prehistory demanded courage, intelligence, cooperation, and, at times, unimaginable desperation. The struggles of millions of years ago shaped the very essence of humanity. Traits like cooperation, ingenuity, and adaptability were honed over countless generations. Hunter-gatherer lifestyles optimized the human body and mind, avoiding many of the ailments that plague modern civilization. Through fire, tools, social care, and cognitive skill, Early humans did more than survive, they thrived. Their innovations, strategies, and social bonds laid the foundation for the species we are today. And so, this was the story of early humans, a life lived millions of years ago, forged in danger, adaptation, and relentless perseverance.